Hey everyone, it's Monster Art School with Steve Ellis. And today we're gonna do a really fun one, I think. I like to think. Uh, I've decided to take my love of doing animal monster creatures or animal warrior creatures and kind of go to another step. Like we did an elephant, we did a bear, we did a couple other creatures. And now I'm like, you know, let's do a wolf because, you know, wolves are awesome. So I gathered up some of my awesome book, wolf, my wolf book references, and uh, we're going to get to it pretty soon. The only, the only slowdown is I, uh, here we go. I've got my wonderful book on wolves right here, and I'm going to use that as my, my inspiration for a wolf warrior. And so or Wolf King. So I'm kind of going through here and looking at different things. And I think this guy should be noble and a little bit scary. Although that one's kind of fun there. He's kind of like, doo -doo -doo. Um, so let's get to it. Um, so now the first step that I'm going to make is... I want to do a gesture for the body. And what a gesture is, is when you kind of basic, you basically come up with the attitude and the personality of the thing you're drawing um, in one or two lines. So what I want is, I want my gesture, I want the, his head and his shoulders to go back like that. And then I want the forward area of his body, the stomach area of his body go forward like that. And then because he's got those wolf legs, I'm going to have the back of the legs come like this. So the basic gesture of the body is going to be that. I know that's, that's kind of confusing, but when you, uh, when you get, when you get through it, you'll see a, a movement like this a flow like that. So up here, this is where the the wolf's head will be. And he's going to be standing on his back legs, so that's why his head is so high. Uh, and then right about here where we start to arc back, I'm going to put a line for his shoulders. And since he's going to be noble, I'm going to have his chest out. So he's got a big kind of barrel chest, and he's kind of like, ha-ha. So you turn the clavicle line. Instead of going down with it, you go up and around like so. And then you can bring it down and in like that to make a upper torso. And then as we bring it down, like so, we'll start to find that we need to have a pelvis here. Now, if the chest is going to be tilting up like that, the pelvis can turn a little toward us. So this is the front face of it and be tilted maybe down like that. So these all, you start all of these with just basic spheres, but you can add more to them as you go. Okay. Hi, Kurt. Hey, Claudio. How's it going, man? Uh, hey, Antonio. Um, now, so now that we've got the upper torso and the upper body kind of figured out, we want to bring the movement of this upper torso into this leg here. So what we'll do is we'll draw kind of a cone coming out of the hip here back to what would essentially be his, his, uh, his ankle. <laughs> um, so his knee is going to be somewhere like here because wolves have their legs kind of set up backwards to humans. So it goes from hip to knee to ankle to toes down here. And we'll do the same here. We go back you know, follow that form to the knee and then back to the ankle. And then we'll bring this out like so and then out to the toes here. So we'll just have a little kind of toe shape there for the toes. Now, for the arms, we're going to start, we could start the arms up here, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to bring, we're going to have maybe the elbow is, I mean, not the elbow, the Shoulder is up there, but I think we're not going to see that. We're going to bring 
the arms from here down to the elbow, uh, at least this arm. And uh, I think he will have his, will go from his elbow to his wrist, to his paw. And basically you just wanna draw either tubes, cylinders, but you're thinking about three-dimensional objects, not two-dimensional objects. Uh, you're thinking, how do I make this a three-dimensional object? And basically, that is essentially, you should be able to draw around the objects like so to give them volume, okay? Now, the, uh, the back arm, the one that's away from us, we want to start it directly across. So we'll, so we'll say it starts there, and we'll have the forearm to the, I mean, the upper arm to the elbow, and then we'll have the elbow up to the wrist, and then we'll put a circle for a paw there, a hand. And I think we'll have him holding some kind of a kingly staff or something like that. So now I'm just gonna adjust this a little bit. We'll have this come like this a little bit more. Now, let's get on to the head. So let's look at the wolf's heads in the pictures. And what you're gonna see is that we really have a couple different shapes that we're dealing with. We're dealing with a larger rounded shape for the whole area of the head and then a conal shape for the nose and then triangles for the ears. So the first step is we've got, the, we've got this circle shape here. Let's have the put a line halfway through that top shape like so and that's going to be where our eyes are going to are going to are going to are going to go so we can just throw one eye there so i have an idea of where i'm going and i'm going to draw a center line right here and i'll draw the other eye there okay now that's just to give us an idea of where the head is going to be um in, in position so now what we can do is we can, from the eyes, let's draw kind of a, a, a four-sided object that tapers towards the eyes and comes out. And we can then turn that into a, a cube, like so. Um, and that's going to be where we put the nose right on top there. And you really want to get these angles in here because these angles, this, this convergence of these lines is what's going to give you the impression that it's going back into his face. Now, right about halfway in here, between this and this, you're going to draw around the eyes like so. And why that is, is we want to create the idea that there's a cheekbone and a forehead. Uh, an eye socket. So we want to create that through these, these, that shape. So kind of think of it as like a heart with a separation in the middle. And then out here, we're going to draw a triangle kind of a shape out like that. And again, out like that. And we can bring this up to the top of the head there. Now, ears, remember we said they were triangles, so let's draw a curved soft triangle like that. And maybe, since we're going to give this personality, let's have that ear head off in that direction. So it's not, they're not perfectly even. Maybe he's listening to a conversation that's going on over there, so we can give him some eyes looking that way. And uh, now, in order for him to be a noble wolf, I think we need to have a, he needs to have a noble look in his eyes. So let's give him a, we'll have a kind of a turned down curved eyebrow here and we'll have another eyebrow that comes up like that. And I'm, cause I'm imagining he's planning some sort of, you know, attack on the South. And so we'll put his little chin down here after we've split this up into two uh, shapes under that nose. And then we can continue the mouth under the cheekbones over here. Okay. Now, 
from here, what we want to do is we want to kind of give the impression we're going to build the hair coming out like this. And we're going to give the impression that he's got this powerful wolfy mane. So we can give it this nice, intense, wolfish mane sticking out of his back. And uh, so you can use these kind of triangle, curved triangles, almost flame-like shapes to create that sense of power. And uh, I think right about here, I'm going to draw a triangle coming down to his hand here. See that triangle there? And we'll draw another triangle here. This one's not quite so much a triangle, but see how it curves? It's got three sides. All right, what these are is they're going to be the beginnings of a cloak. So as we, as we create this character, continue this line down past the body, and we can bring another longish triangle down here. And with this over here, we bring this around and out like so. That way we have kind of a nice dashing cape. Now I'm imagining this guy is a, a warrior king, so he should have a some kind of a circlet up here on his head, but nothing too fancy because you know he's got to fight, so the thing can't fall off. So maybe it has like a, a gem in the middle, something simple like that, right? And then his shoulders, let's give him let's give him a piece of armor that wraps around his shoulder. Now look at this shape. I'm drawing it that way because I want it to look like it goes around his arm. So see how his arm fits into that shoulder shape? I mean, into that armor shape. So we're going to do that. We're going to come bring it down here. And then we're going to do it again down here. And then we can, that way we can have him be this very dashing soldier king kind of... Uh, Wolf. Now, one thing about wolf's eyes, let's just go into this for a sec, is the wolf eye has pretty dark uh, areas where the tear duct is and up here. So if you get that nice dark kind of triangle at the bottom and then bring that triangle up, what's nice is it kind of gives them a really kind of beautifully mysterious kind of look to his face, which I always think is nice about wolves. They, they always look kind of elegant and mysterious anyway. Um, so now let's get, we want to make sure that this shape that is his arm is overlapped by the shape that's the forearm here. So let's draw the elbow in. Remember, just leave it like a round ball, and then you pull a longer arm out of that round ball until you reach the round ball that is his, uh, his wrist. Okay, and we'll do the same kind of thing over here. So let's, let's get the armor plating there for that top piece. And then we'll do another piece of armor here. And then we'll do a third piece of armor there. And we'll bring this around so we create that sense. And then, same thing, we have the ball and we bring it up to the wrist right there. Okay. Now, I don't know about you, but I think this wolf should have a clasp that holds his cloak on. So we'll just draw like a little ring right there. His hand's going to overlap that in a minute, but I just wanted to have that there just in case. And we can add another triangle here just to make it feel a little bit more swoopy and fun. Hi, Lara. Hey, Ted. Hi, Rick. <laughs> A whole bunch of you guys today. Um, so now we're going to bring this line out and in, and let's give him a a waist, a belt. I mean, at his waist. So remember, with these, just think about how they wrap around. So you're going to bring it around, similar to how we did this, where we bring that around the next one. Each one wraps around the one below it. So see that movement there. Bring it out and wrap it around. Bring it out. 
that just gives that sense of three-dimensional quality to the arm. And so this belt is going to do the same thing to the waist. And I think what we're going to do with him is we're going to throw a armor plate here. And you'll have a nice armor plate. And then maybe what we do with this is we can have it overlap. So it looks like plates of armor are hanging over each other. So we can have his armor plate and it kind of hangs over his, his belt there. And so maybe under here, it's got some cloth and then we'll have his belt buckle. Well, maybe not his belt buckle. We'll have at least his sword buckled here. So let's draw the hilt of the sword. It's basically just a rectangle. We can draw another rectangle for the, I'm sorry, the handle, the hilt, this part here. And then we can just draw another rectangle down to here just to give us a sense of a sword and we can put a triangle on the bottom there and that's very simple and we can get into more detail on that but that's just kind of fun simple way of doing it we'll put the belt back on him maybe he's got a big clasp over here for his belt keeps it on his side so it doesn't fall out when he's fighting and then we'll put another piece of armor and we'll wrap that down around like this and of course if you're wearing armor, you don't want that chafing up against your skin. So underneath this, you'll probably have a piece of cloth that wraps around like so. And actually for this, let's not have it go down like that. Let's have it come, let's have it come around and up. And that should give it more of the sense of the cloth moving around the figure. And this here is the backside of that armor plate. So we'll just, uh, we'll just get the, well, thanks, Lara. Thanks, Rick. We'll just get the uh, armor plate over here. So now um, we can get the knees in here again and maybe throw some fur off the back here. Bring it down here to the, the feet and we'll throw one, two, three, four little basically beans on the bottom here, you know, just bean shapes, but this one overlaps the other three and each one is, goes behind the other. And so by drawing one over the other like this, by overlapping them, you give the sense of objects moving into the distance. Um, and so we'll do the same with this leg. We'll bring this around and we'll draw one bean here. Now it's going to be a little different than over here because this toe is smaller than the other two toes in the middle here. So we'll go small toe, bigger toe, bigger toe, smaller toe. And that way it has that more of that sense of a dog's paw or a wolf's paw coming down. And we can throw claws in here, like so. And let's get his paw in, because I just realized we kind of covered up his paw. So think of this as a a, uh, a tube, a um, cylinder, and then right about here on that cylinder, we'll throw some one, two, three knuckles, and then we can draw let's see, he's got his hand like this, so we'd have his thumb on this side, so I don't know what I'm thinking I guess he should have a thumb so let's draw a thumb shape there, even though dogs don't have thumbs. And we'll, so we'll have a, a shape for this area of the thumb, and then we'll do the middle section of the thumb there. And then we'll have that curve under like so. And then we can show his knuckle here, second knuckle there. I think the whole deal with this guy, he's, he's a powerful, powerful guy, but he likes to pretend like he doesn't know that he's that powerful. So he has this kind of unassuming, oh, me? With his paw kind of up over his uh, over his, his chest here. And his other paw is going to be here holding like some sort of a scepter. So we'll have, let's put the scepter in here. So the scepter come down to the ground, come up, 
and then we can kind of go make a fun scepter shape. So maybe a disc here, and then we'll make a, a spear here, and then we'll just kind of go crazy with like a three-pronged shape there. And we'll mimic that three-pronged shape here. So you have kind of this symmetry between the three prongs here on his on his uh, staff and the three prongs on his on his helmet there on his uh not helmet crown so i don't know what this symbol means but you know if i was to do this for a game or a project or anything like that i'd probably figure out what that symbol means or make up a symbol that actually makes sense so but in this case since we're just kind of mucking around making stuff up as we go, we can just kind of, you know, play it around. I mean, and, and a lot of times playing around with ideas like this is exactly what you do to get yourself interested, I mean, into new ideas. Like it's often playing around in a sketchbook or just kind of throwing ideas down, not really thinking about it is when your best ideas sometimes come. So around here, we want to give that sense that the hand is holding the staff like that. So let's get a bean here. Kind of a long bean there, another one there. I know I'm calling them beans. It's kind of a weird thing, but they kind of look like beans. Um, you want them to be a little rounded, you know, like black beans. Um, and then under here, underneath each one of these will give a small indication that the hand wraps around. Now the pinky should be smaller than the others and curve in. So we'll do that. And then this finger should curve down. A little bit so you get this general curve around and then let's put a bean there for the top of the thumb we'll overlap or underlap that with another section for this middle section of the thumb and then we can throw the palm section here the staff will come through like that we can throw a nice little triangle on there for his claw and away we go. Like we can get a really fun, you know, put some hair on here, really get some nice cloak movement here. Um, get some hair on the edges here just to, to make that look really nice and kind of uh, furry. And then I think what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to go in with a darker pencil. Um, because what I want to do is I want to show how I might refine this drawing beyond just the initial drawing. So give me one sec to get my darker pencil. And you'll see what I do with the darker pencil is I basically select the lines that I want to be. Oh, that's graphite. I don't want to use that one. I don't want to use a colored pencil. I want to use a darker lead pencil. I have them. I'm just missing everything right now. Hmm. Where did they go? Oh, I know where they went. Give me one sec. There you go. And here it is. All right. So now what I'm going to do with this, with this darker pencil, see this pencil has a darker lead. It's a, a Palomino Blackwing. They're really nice. Um, thanks. Actually, I take that as a huge compliment. Don Bluth is amazing. It's funny because I don't really, uh, Don Bluth was amazing. I don't really like, you know, I don't really do animation. I've done comics most of my career. Whoops. Ah. And I've done illustration for fantasy books and stuff. But there's something about kind of simplifying things down that's really exciting. When I, when I started doing stuff for The Only Living Boy, uh, my comic series uh, with Dave Gallagher, I started to kind of get into this kind of simplification and it really, I, I really enjoy it for doing, you know, interesting characters with personality and kind of building unique worlds with them. So I'm basically going to go in and just choose the lines I want. Now, I'm thinking along the lines that this wolf is going to have, we have to do the, the patterning on, the, clo on the, uh, the fur. So we'll have some dark on the nose there. The nose should generally be black. So under here, we'll just kind of 
go dark with that. We'll give a little bit of darkness down under the mouth here and then do the chin like that. And then as we move up here, we want to keep that darkness going. So we'll have him, we'll bring that around like this. So the patterning on the wolf really makes him feel more like a wolf. So you really have to make sure that you get those patterns in there. So under here, you want to get some dark shadows in here. And then here we want to get some fur out going like this. Give them a little bit of personality with some extra lines under there. We'll get this kind of thing going. Get his furry ears up. Like so. Really play around with the, the patterning here. Let's we can sharpen up the lines on the crown. I think it really helps to sharpen stuff up as you go. Um, because you, you don't necessarily have to erase everything. You just keep what's there and build on it. And now under here we'll go We'll get some fur there, and we'll make all of this black, or dark, at least. And now we'll bring the cloak around. Remember all those simple shapes you create, you can bring them back. You just go to the simple shapes and kind of soft, I mean, not bring them back, but you can soften them and make them a little less abrupt. And then they suddenly become all these shapes that you want to create. So like this was just a triangle before, but now it's become the cloak. You know, this is still a triangle. I haven't really done much, but I just put a line like that in there, a nice curved line, and it kind of makes it start to feel like a cloak too. Um, let's give the armor some detailing here and we'll just kind of reinforce these lines there we go and then we want to get do the same with the armor out here reinforce those lines and you can imply that there's a a pattern on this armor just by kind of drawing off the surface um, and you can do the same here if you want kind of creating little patterns as long as you keep them symmetrical meaning the same on one side as the other it starts to look like it was intentional <laughs> and I guess it is. It's just, it, it starts to look more like a design and less like, oh, I just made it up as I went. Um, frequently, though, this kind of thing takes, you take a little extra time and you go and you make sure this stuff looks pretty awesome before you finish it up. Um, but for the purposes of this, I think this is cool. And so... I'm going to mimic these down here. So we'll go with the same shapes here. Just to kind of make it look like an intentional, like a, you know, an, an armorer went and said, oh, okay, I, I, this is the pattern and the style that I'm going for. So I'm going to 
keep it going through the through the whole armor. Uh, we'll probably do the same thing down here. Um, so now the upper arm here, let's just put some fur on the back of that, bring it up to the wrist and then open uh, up to here to the hand. And then we can bring this around. Again, go, you can bring that armor design on here. Or something similar. Something at least similar enough that you kind of go, oh, these guys were doing something on purpose, not just mucking it around. Um, so mimic it over here as well. We're only going to see that portion of it, so we'll just do that. But just enough to suggest. And then we can darken in there. Now let's get the lower part of his arm in and the lower part of his arm over here as well. There we go. Now, uh, now the we're gonna make a belt here. Bring this around. We want a shadow from the armor down on the belt. And then bring this around like that. And then we've got his armor plate here. And we have to erase that stuff here that shows the legs. Uh, we'll have the armor plate and we'll give it the same pattern again. Or something, you know, similar. Again, similar enough that people think it was intentional. <laughs> Or think that it's not not think that it's intentional. It's definitely intentional, but think that it's means something more than just something you worked out as you were drawing. So now here, since this is a kingly sword, I think unlike some of our other creatures that we've been doing lately, this sword should have a nice handle, maybe with a an interesting end on the pommel here. And then the, we'll bring this line back and come out like so. And then I think we'll come in making kind of triangles like this and then come out and back in and we can throw a nice little gem right there. And of course, he's not gonna just wear his sword out. So he's gonna have a scabbard on this right here. Yeah, I know it's a short sword for a big wolf, but I figure, you know, he doesn't use it. It's for show. And we'll throw some leather working on there just to make it look like he's got some strapping on there. And we'll make sure the edge of the sword has a ring here and a ring there. And we can draw a cable to connect it up to his belt here. Um, so this is the so that's the hilt and then we've got now right here what we can do is we can draw just draw a little thin line along the end of the cloth here and then another one another one like this just make like you're making stripes And then you go like this. And what that's going to do is going to make it look like we've got some chain mail underneath there. And then we can throw another piece of armor over here. So that matches this one here. Now the legs, I'm just gonna let this leg basically go into a lot of shadow. Because right now it really doesn't need to be, we don't need to see much of it. We can just let it go 
to shadow for the most part up here. We'll just pretend that he's casting a shadow from his body. Actually, thinking of shadows, let's put that underneath there to really bring his head forward, like so. Um, and then this leg, I think I'm going to do some of the same thing. We're just going to shade this here, and we'll shade under here. So as if the light's coming from above, the top will have light on it, and this part will have light. And we can then draw shadows underneath the toes. And then up here, we'll, we'll get this spire going. Now, I would bring out a, a ruler, but I don't have one at hand, so I'm going to use my pencil. You can do this, too. Just to get the basic line in there so you're not mucking it up. Um, we'll darken the tips of the fingers here. We'll go under here. We'll make sure this is dark here and then draw around that. And as we come up around like this, we'll put that line there, which will give us the impression that this is a three dimensional object. And then we can do this kind of a thing coming up like that. And then here. We'll go up and around, and now we're just kind of touching this up. Let's get the cape in. And then we'll finish that in, and then we can throw a shadow in the cape here. So the implication is that the light is coming from above and darkening the inside of the shadow. And we can make this come around. So it implies, this implies that the cloak is moving underneath him. And then we can bring it up to here. And there we go. Hey, Tyler, how you doing, man? Um, I think that's pretty much the end here. You can add some decorations on stuff. You could throw like, you know, circles going down like this or not circles, but ovals going down and kind of make a pattern. If you like, I don't know if I like that, but you know, Hey, um, all that stuff is kind of the extras, but all those extras kind of make it, you know, uh, give it more personality. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of shadow underneath the armor here and here, wherever something overlaps, I'm going to put a dark shadow. So all through here, here, under the armor here, we'll just give it a nice little shadow under here like that. And there you go. Cool. Well, I'm now going to sign it because, you know, you got to do that. Steve with a big exclamation point because I had fun drawing today. I hope you guys had fun, uh, fun drawing. These pencils, uh, this one with the, with the flat eraser, this is called a Palomino Blackwing. Um, you can get them online. Uh, they are meant to be for, they were apparently originally for animation way back in the in the thirties, I guess. I don't know. They have like a storied history of being like the chosen pencil of like Disney back in the Disney animation days. I don't know how true that is, but that's the story. So, uh, but they are really nice pencils. Um, the erasers are kind of fun cause you can take the eraser out and refill it. So if your pencil is kind of dying and you need a better erase and you need more eraser, I mean, your pencil's good, you know, but your erase down all your eraser you can just add a new eraser in there. Um, down here, let's see, let's just put a slight shadow on the ground there. There we go. Okay. Well, I hope you had fun today. Um, I'm going to be 
doing more stuff at uh, Monster Art School with Steve Ellis on uh, YouTube. I'm going to be posting a lot of these newer ones on there. So if you missed out on some of the animals we've been doing recently, the creatures and monsters we've been doing, um, give a look on there. And uh, I will see you all, I guess, what, today is Wednesday? So I'll probably be doing two more this week. And uh, so 2 o'clock every day. Um, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.